Hey YouTubers, this is Ken, Asian Jeep. Thank you all for watching the videos and subscribing. I didn't intend on having that many people uh, watch my videos and whatnot, but apparently I do something right. Uh, I am not an ASC certified mechanic. I'm probably a shade tree mechanic at best. I just like to read instructions and I can turn a wrench. Uh, I am all about trying to save a buck or two when I can, spending it when I need to spend it. Uh, so a lot of the labor I'll be doing myself. This will be a series of videos um, on my build progress for Project XJ, which I've named Project Simon. So this is Simon. Simon says, buy me this, and Simon says, buy me that. This is a 1996 Jeep Cherokee Sport. Uh, it is a manual transmission. I was looking for an automatic, but I, I decided to go with this one because for it being 20 years old, this is one of the rare finds I have with the right price that has the original paint, the clear coat still in great condition, the engine strong, uh, it's been well maintained. The interior, which I'll show you in a minute, is in immaculate condition. The headliner's intact. There's no torn seats. All the gauges work. And because it's spent its entire life in New Mexico, fortunately, I don't have to worry about rust or anything like that. In, in fact, the one of the, uh, the rear shackle bolts in the back, I already PB blasted it, and I got it to break loose fairly easy with the 25-inch cheater bar. Um, I know a lot of people have had troubles with those. So anyways, this is the... Um, the new project, so this is my project XJ, I'm calling it Simon, for uh, Simon says buy me this and Simon says buy me that. Uh, I am on a timeline, today is uh, January 31st, 2016, and my timeline is to get everything ready uh, at least three weeks before Easter Jeep Safari, which is the last week in March. That'll give me a time, enough time for a shakedown run to make sure I don't need to do any more adjustments or fixes or have to spend more money. This Cherokee is going to see a six inch long arm full traction suspension lift, swapping it out with a corporate eight and a quarter axle that's been built out and I'll show you that here in a minute. Keeping the front Dana 30. Uh, as you can see, I've done the front bushwhacker flares. I'm about to do the rears. That's gonna be another video. I have the ARB lockers going in, ARB compressors going in, uh, audio update, because when I bought this, it had just got broken into, so there was no audio or speakers, so I replaced all that. So as you can see, I mean, the interior was in really good shape, no torn seats. Um, starting to kind of soften a little bit. It could use some new cushions, but I'm not too worried about that. But yeah, everything is in really good working order. Um, I guess I'll give you the full tour of the interior, what I've done so far. I have already wired and install the ARB compressor. This is the smallest compressor ARB makes. I only want this to run the lockers. Uh, I have a Vire system that's in a toolbox, so it's somewhat portable. Connected to the battery terminals, I'll use that for now. Uh, later down the road, the ARB has this monster system I want to install in the back, but that's going to be down the road when funds open back up. But I've already installed this, I ran the wires back here. If you follow the ARB instructions, it's fairly easy to do. If your Cherokee already has uh, ABS, which mine's going to be pulled out, these ARB lines will go through the holes where the ARB sensor wires go out to the rear. Um, the reason why I have to pull mine out is because this current vehicle is a Dana 35, which came with ABS, and I am swapping it out for a corporate eight and a quarter. And for the same year model, the corporate eight and a quarter did not come uh, installed with ABS. In fact, if you have ABS in your Cherokee, you have a Dana 35. Uh, if you don't, then you most likely have a corporate eight and a quarter or a Dana 44. Uh, and as you can see, I've already installed the switches for the ARB. And if you look online, well, I guess let me back up. Uh, due to legal concerns, ARB has the instructions wired to where you can only activate the front locker if the rear locker is activated. If you look online, uh, you can find a little sp uh, the instructions on how to splice a wire or do a jump wire so that you can activate the front locker or the rear locker independent of each other. Uh, but either case, those are fully activated by the compressor switch. It's a safety feature. And as you can tell, that's my Kenwood radio I put in. I put an amp under the uh, passenger seat. I put an 8-inch sub in the back uh, in the little cubby hole using, um, I think they called it XJ Pod or something like that. But yeah, the interior is actually really nice. I've, I've taken the time to go ahead and um, redo my dash lights with LED. So they're actually bright again. One of the downfalls of using LED is that you kind of lose a dimmer function. They do get somewhat brighter. So that's the brightest setting. And that right there would be the lowest setting. So not too much difference, really. Um, also replaced all the light, the LED bulbs behind here. Behind here for my rear defroster. My AC panel, which the, the factory ones are really, really dim and I couldn't even see that night. 
but at night that's actually easy to see now let's see the back seat condition headliner everything's intact i also changed out the led bulbs for the uh, dome lights i also changed out led headlights in the front under the hood um the engine was actually steam cleaned or pressure washed before i got it so that's why it looks so clean i didn't do this uh when i got it you know it had its fair share of leaks so i took the time the last couple of weeks to kind of go through the engine compartment and change everything i could for all the electrical i added an extra fuse box over here that runs i have three fuses just for the alarm itself i have a fuse for the arb compressor um the radio uh, amp for the inside and the accessory because I have a power power distribution block inside so I can hook up like the CB radio, extra USB phone chargers and whatnot to kind of bring it up to the year 2016. Duralast battery, I'll change up with an Optima when I need to. Right now it's just on the wait list. But when I first got it, I was leaking coolant here. So I replaced that gasket and since I had to drain the tank, might as well replace a thermostat, thermostat housing. If you do the thermo thermostat housing, Make sure you get the inlet tube with it. It's easier to install a new one than to reuse the old one, and it's only a couple bucks, and I highly, highly suggest that. Um, also replaced a fan clutch, and when I took all this off, I noticed that the radiator tank at the bottom was seeping coolant, so I figured, well, if the tank's already drained, might as well drop in a new one. So this is your AutoZone Special Radiator. It works. I, it actually runs a lot cooler now. Uh, before, it was running just above 210, and right now it runs exactly at 195. I'm sure it's a combination of the new thermostat and a new radiator. Uh, replace the hoses, uh, upper and lower. Uh, replace the water pump since I was already here. Uh, replace the valve cover gasket because it was basically pouring oil out the back. So I replaced that. I gave a new dis uh, put in a new distributor cap, rotor, new plug wires, new spark plugs. I even changed out the O-ring from the oil filter adapter because that was leaking oil. And then once all that was done, I noticed the oil pan gasket was leaking, so I replaced that. Since I dropped the oil pan, I replaced the oil pump and the rear main seal all at the same time, since so it's the same amount of labor. So basically, the only gasket or seal I did not do is the timing cover, which I've noticed it is seeping very slowly. And I don't know if the timing belt was ever done, so that's going to be on the to-do list down the road. It'll be more of the preventative maintenance things to just go and get it replaced. And that's really it. I'm keeping the factory air box. Um... I know a lot of people like to change to a cold air intake system or put a cone filter in. The factory box actually does a really good job of keeping out excess water and debris. So I'm going to do my best to keep this. The unfortunate thing is I lose a lot of space because I wanted to mount the ARB compressor here. But this is the ABS module and there are instructions on how to actually take this out if you're removing your ABS system, which I am doing. Uh, like I said, yes, the vehicle was built with ABS, uh, but because at the same year model, if you did not choose the ABS option, you would have gotten a corporate axle. So this series model, or 96, you had option. ABS was optional is basically what I'm saying. For now, I'm leaving it here because I don't feel like doing that work right now. Um, if I were, were to remove the air box, this whole area becomes open to put other accessories, like another second battery if you wanted to, or whatever else you wanted to do. So when I found this Cherokee online, um, locally here in Albuquerque, I ran a car check or a car factory port. It's accident free. I mean, there's a couple of dents in the in the bumper and whatnot, uh, especially in the rear. But the frame itself, there's no rust. I mean, it, as far as a fine goes, I, th I think this is money well spent for for a toy vehicle. Like I said, it's completely paid off, so I actually own something for a change. Beside, well, and the trailer. Um, this we're we'll be paying on for quite a while, but let's not talk about that. So earlier I mentioned a couple of the highlights of the projects. Uh, for the bill for Project Simon, uh, the first thing to do is to secure a corporate eight and a quarter axle, which you see here. And I've already done a lot of the work. So I'm kind of starting this video series eh, about 15% into the build. The long story with this is I found one uh, just south of Albuquerque, but when I took it to the shop to have it rebuilt, uh, they found some problems inside the axle. So that was 150 bucks gone, wasted. Fortunately, the shop had this laying out back, which was in perfect shape. So with this, uh, it had the 306 gears or whatever the corporate factory has, and I changed it out for 410s, D2 gearing. I put 10 factory chromoly shafts in there, basically rebuilt the entire axle. So everything inside the axle was brand new. I even replaced the brake lines because it was sitting in the junkyard for a while, or I'm sorry, out in their lot. So I changed out the brake lines, so now I know the brake lines are clean inside. I've already installed the full traction um, rear hose that it comes with, part of the kit. 
the airline's already plumbed. And this I got done from a local shop up in Rio Rancho, which is just north of Albuquerque, um, as far as rebuilding the, the axle goes. As far as the brakes, I went ahead and rebuilt them, uh, put new wheel cylinders, new shoes, new springs, new components, new hardware. Both sides is done. So this axle is ready to go in to Project Simon. Right now, just to kind of pass time by while I'm waiting for some issues to be resolved with, with uh, full traction, I'm working on installing the Bushwhacker fender flares to get those out of the way so that when the 33 inch tires go on here, I'll be putting 33, 12 and a half, 15s on here uh, with about a four inch to three and a quarter inch back spacing. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is getting a six inch full traction long arm kit. I did a lot of studying, a lot of reviewing online, whether I want to go with three link, four link, a Y link, and to maintain the factory geometry, because this will be driven on the road through, throughout the year, I wanted the best overall performance. And for the money, I decided to drop the money on the full traction system. It's uh, a lot of what Jeep Speed uses. If you don't know about Jeep Speed, Google it. It's basically a lot of uh, Baja racing with Cherokees. So I figured they know what they're doing. Uh, when I got the kit, I do have a couple of issues that I have to work out with them. One is that my rear shackles didn't come with the bushings. And the first time I called, they said, oh, you can just use the factory ones. So I ordered a pair of factory shackle bushings uh, that mounts on the uh, frame. And it was too big to fit inside of the full traction uh, bushings, or the, the, uh, the eye for the bushing. So I'm at the call them tomorrow, Monday, to get that resolved. The other thing is uh, the control arm brackets in the front. It seems like the welding was off just a little bit, just enough to, for the bolts to not go through the hole all the way. So I got a call to get those replaced. Um, I was supposed to start the lift install this weekend, but since that wasn't going to happen, I decided to do the Bushwhacker fender flares. Again, it'll be in the um, the, the next video. I, uh, what else is this getting? So it is getting ARB lockers front and rear. Uh, the front Dana 30 will be rebuilt after the lift is done. So as far as timeline goes, I wanted to get the rear lift installed, get the SYE kit from Advanced Adapters installed so that I can get a measurement to order a new rear drive shaft. While I was waiting for that, I would work on the front lift, and then when the rear drive shaft comes in, I would take off the front drive shaft because the front's still running the 306 gears, while the new rear is going to have the 410, technically 411 gears from G, uh, G2. Then at least I can drive it in two-wheel drive to the shop so that they can rebuild the front to 410s or 411s to make it match. Then I can put the front drive shaft back on. Uh, but until that happens, um, I'm going to do everything cosmetic that I can because I am running out of time a little bit. So I am going to finish the installation of the Bushwhacker Fender Flares. Again, a uh, video will be next in series. Hopefully after that, I'll be doing a video on the actual install of the lift kit and as Project Simon builds. All right, thanks for watching.